This month, the Hearst opened a large new exhibit displaying the work of prolific sculptor and painter Dean Schwartz, as well as his sons. Today we spoke to Dean and the curator, Emily Drennan. For the past year, we've been working on an exhibit of Dean Schwartz paintings in pots. I have about 2,000 pieces in, in my studio now. He's been making pots for a very long time. Over the course of uh, 58 years, as he tells it, when he started going to UNI, which was the Iowa State Teachers College at the time, he was going for athletics. I came to the university on a scholarship for four years. I was a basketball uh, player. And then he became interested in the arts. Uh, Paul Roland Smith was my teacher, and he was one of the most incredible people that I've ever said. The first class I was working in, and he said, how are you working on this painting? And I said, well, I just do this. And he says, really? He says, which part do you like the best? It seems doesn't come together. And I said, well, I like this corner here. And he said, the best thing to do is to paint over that and then st start working on the whole picture. And he's just uh, a man who was always doing funny things, but the, behind the funny was something that was uh, serious. Dean Schwartz got his Bachelor of Arts and his Master of Arts there in the 60s, was a Marine, and when he traveled and on his shore leave, he would visit uh, artist studios, um, Shoji Hamada, and Marguerite Wildenhain. My background in art comes from Marguerite Wildenhain and uh, her uh, things at the Bauhaus and before that. Uh, she knew all of the people back to uh, 1688. Uh, um, he studied with her for a couple of summers, I think. He's written books about her. And she knew all the masters they're all master after master master. And then when she made me master potter, well, I think one of only two of us, I think that she said specifically, there may have been others, but I don't know all about what she did. But pretty amazing for me uh, to be such a, in a, a, an old tradition. I don't know, for me, the, one of the most interesting pots in the show is um, a, an altered vessel that's in the shape of a person and has a really interesting texture on the bottom. And what I learned is that he took an ancient pot shard and ground it up and used it as grog to add texture and body to the clay. And for somebody who's so interested in the history of ceramics and um, with the important people he's worked with over the years, I thought that that was really fitting that he used that technique. And so using all of those kinds of things that came before, Always the question is, do the best you can and do better than ones before you if you can. I would never say that I would be, was better than Marguerite Wildenhain, but I did some, I, I'm continuing to make some very good pieces. Yeah, I think he was interested um, in the craft school of Marguerite's and also I believe he spent a summer at the Haystack Mountain School of Crafts in Maine. He taught at Luther College, as did his wife, and he started a school at his house called South Bear School. His kids served as assistants. He has four sons and two daughters. Lane works pretty specifically right now. Uh, he's a, at Luther College. He is the one who does all of the minis that I decorated. print that we're showing of his son Lane is a mixed media, some kind of paint on tar paper. And Gunnar is a, is a, uh, works a full time with me making pots, ones that are about four or five feet tall. One of the hallmarks of Dean's style is his um, incising into the pots that he once made that now his son Gunnar throws for him. So it's a kind of a support two ways. It's wonderful to be to decorating the pieces that they've made, uh, ones that are, you know, 
an inch tall and ones that are three or four feet high. And I like to decorate all of them. Um, his decorations have uh, themes in them, wildlife and uh, landscapes. They seem to have an agricultural theme. Um, wildlife, he's very interested in animals. He has a sensitivity to animals, as you'll see on some of the, the pots in the show. And many of his paintings, um, especially the ones we have here, have a seed or plant theme. All of the paintings we are showing here in the gallery are done in oil. This has to be something to see, that uh, evaluate on everyone the best things in the world, and then ask how they fit in. And if they think that it's really good, and it's not very much of a price, then buy them and support us. Uh, that's important for everyone. But there are some of them uh, that are going to museums that already ask for them. We have uh, over 50 museums in, I think, six or eight countries for our pieces. A lot of people in the area probably remember the Henry Myrtle Gallery that was on the hill, uh, run by Mr. Pedersen for many years. And I first saw Dean's work exhibited in the windows of that store. So if you've been missing it, it's here. Uh, they're very wise. They have a terrific uh, group of people working here, helping with these things and they, they love what they're doing. In, in this exhibit, I decided that I wanted people to see a little bit more about him as a person and not just an artist, so I've included some photographs of his home, his studio, and the grounds around. Yeah, and when they suggest something, you may not agree with it, but it isn't anything that would be negative. It was just a matter of art, and uh, no two artists uh, ever come exactly to their if so, it would be a dull life. <laughs> this exhibit will remain on view through March 19th of this year. It is a rare treat to host these pieces as he is an internationally acclaimed artist. Be sure to visit it this spring. And if you're interested in owning his incredible work, ask the Hearst staff about which items are for sale. And if you can't afford a larger piece from the exhibit, he also has a number of beautiful potteries, such as vases and bowls, for sale at an affordable price, located near the front desk of the Hearst.